This conference will now be recorded. And here I am. Good morning. When I'm sharing my screen, I can't really see everybody else. So I know a lot of you have been sharing your screen. I just haven't been able to see you. Um, and just one more quick reminder, we are not muting the whole room like we normally do. Um, so if you're not speaking, if you'll please make it a point to mute yourself so that way we're not picking up a whole lot of background noise, that would be fantastic. Um, I'm loving all these introductions. So I'm gonna stop talking. And if you just have a brilliant idea you wanna share or a question you wanna throw out to the group, feel free. See, I used to be a social worker. I am really comfortable with silence. <laughs> okay, well, this is Linda Goff. Um, please tell me how you guys are gonna be doing your virtual programming versus anything face-to-face. Uh, I'm I'm here from uh, Putnam County. Um, we are hoping soon to get back into real people face to face stuff, but we are still doing virtual, which is why I'm here. And I've been doing most of the virtual programming uh, for the county with some help with my coworkers. So we're doing everything from story times to Dungeons and Dragons stuff, hence my background, and uh, sewing and all kinds of Steam and Makerspace stuff. So hoping I get some good ideas from you guys. I'm Sally from um, Land County Public Library up by Casey, <laughs> up here in Tallahassee. Uh, we're going to be sticking with um, virtual programs through the summer um, and activity bags and things that I think everybody's kind of like seen or maybe done a little bit of before. Um, so we're kind of heading that way. Um, we also do a big Cosmicon event in August um, and that'll still be virtual. Um, and I think most of those decisions were made on, you know, children not being able to be vac vaccinated by then. Um, and our numbers were still pretty high up here. Um, so we'll still be doing virtual um, and kind of figuring that out as we go, I guess. So this time last year, I know everybody was having to make the shift to virtual, but this time last year, it was sort of a, a reactive shift. Um, whereas now everybody has about a year um, if you've been doing virtual programming. So I'm curious, what are you doing differently this summer with virtual programming than you did last year? This is Mandy from St. Pete. Um, I think we're paying for page turners and we're not going to bust we're not going to stress ourselves out trying to create all this virtual programming ourselves. We've got um, read squared page turners. We're just going to turn it all over to page turners and let just use their virtual programming in conjunction with read squared um, and just not stress ourselves out about it. This is Darlene um, from Martin County Library System. Um, I'll piggyback on that. We're also planning on doing page turner because um, we did it last year and it worked really well. Um, it helped to keep our numbers up um, in, in regards to attendance. Um, it was also um, a great way to um, promote the summer reading program and have Beanstack um, be the virtual um, reading log where we still found folks that were coming in with their with their print logs, but Beanstack was nice because it allowed people um, to explore Beanstack when maybe they normally wouldn't. Um, and then same thing, I don't think that we're going to try to um, do a whole lot of our own content creation. Uh, I think we'll, we'll make sure that we um, reach out to virtual um, performance uh, performers if we do and then um, we're going to continue to take home um, craft kits because those are really uh, popular. And then we're still doing a few outdoor events. Um, we're trying to do some in-person story times, but keeping the, lum the numbers really low um, and, and doing registration, which we normally never do. Yes. <laughs> 
Uh, hi there. Uh, this is Cassidy Clayton from the Clay County Public Library System, Fleming Island branch. Um, as you mentioned, it was pretty reactive last summer when we were trying to get back in the swing of things this year. Uh, we're looking at, as some other folks have said, we're going to continue on make and take crafts. Um, but for summer, uh, summer program specifically, we'll be splitting them up into uh, school age kits, which will focus more on STEAM or STEM and then some arts and such like that. And then preschool story time kits. So for the preschool story times, we'll be recording short segments of video um, and effectively dropping the link for the, the growing up the adults in the family as well so they can watch that link and then do the accompanying craft or a kit with that and then most of our programming is going to be virtual aside from the folks coming in to pick up the kits themselves we are also doing story walks um i'm not sure that we're doing one specifically for summer but those will be a passive program that runs continually throughout we are planning on culminating um, with a youth services wide event. So between the children, the school age kids and the teens uh, with a virtual D and D uh, wrap up party. What are you using for those who are doing virtual D and D and other types of gaming, which what platforms are you using? Um, uh, this is Misha from Putnam County again. We're going to be doing some virtual D&D stuff. We use Zoom um, and then the online platform of Roll20 as the virtual tabletop. Um, and we're going to continue. We've been doing some D&D uh, &D stuff and we're also going to be doing some more uh, live interactive stuff. So we're basically using Zoom and um, like I said, Roll20. Uh, .NET is a virtual tabletop, which is actually good for a lot of things, not just D&D. It gives you a place to put down it's like having a real tabletop you can put down notes and things and everybody can see them. Does it cost anything or is that a free resource? Um, it has it has a very minimal cost for some fancy stuff, but actually you can use it for free and do just about most of the things that you need to do for free. Um, I think I my personal account is like $4 a month or $5 a month. So even if you pay for the juiced up version, it's not too expensive. That sounds like a great resource to end up in our Google Doc. <laughs> I was just going to echo that we've also had just a lot of popularity with D&D &D with teens and even adults. So, um, you know, if you have people, that, I'm not a D&D &D person, like I don't know enough, but we have a lot of people in our library that do know a lot. Uh, so it's been great to be able to um, work with those people and have them help us with those programs. Um, and they've been really popular with our teens. We, we started um, the virtual D&D last summer um, with the teens, and we used Roll20 as well as the platform, the free version, and, and we've been doing it ever since. And so we'll, we'll plan to continue doing it this summer because it's been successful. We also do, um, there's a thing called One Page Dungeon. Um, and it's basically D and D, but it's all confined to all the rules and story you need to do the game is on one piece of paper. So it's super easy, super fast, usually like two hour adventures. And we were doing that with kids as young as six and seven and they, they loved it. And there are literally thousands of them out there for free on one page dungeon. Hi, uh, my anybody... Oh, sorry. <laughs> Has anybody had any success with Twitch or Discord yet for any uh, online programming? We use Discord in St. Pete. That's what all our teen programming has been on, and it's been really successful. Oh, yeah, um, good. And we've gotten to where we at first we had just had the um, Discord accessible for certain hours of the week, but now we leave it on all the time because we find that the teens interact more when they can come and go on their own time. So we've just created um, a bunch of pages with different information, different things they can do. And then we have set hours each week where we're in there hanging out, um, playing um, the Jackbox party games or streaming anime in there. Um, so it's, 
it's been real successful for us. Cool. I know um, Lake County, which is a system I'm from. Hi, Linda. Um, <laughs> uh, we're looking at Twitch and uh, as well as uh, Discord for not just this coming summer. That is probably going to be the uh, for for us, but um, but forever after, I guess. Mandy, I am curious, since you all leave your uh, Discord room up, is there a way to monitor what's going on in there if you all aren't present? Um, my, my staff check it first thing every morning, um, but we really haven't had any problems. I think there's some bots that you can probably set up to monitor some of it, um, but but so far we haven't had any issues so i think if we were we would probably close it back down but as of right now we haven't seen any um need to to shut it down so um but we do have rules um that they have to agree to when they sign yeah, in got one and, more question yeah. um has anybody used linktree yet for managing like all of your online media platforms and all that anybody heard of it yeah we just it's actually, relatively new yeah. yeah we just launched it well we're about anyone, to launch anyone it. linktree <laughs> not yet yes. well anyway um linktree is it's an online utility that enables you to take all of your social media links and put it all into just one link so that when a patron clicks on that individual link it will take them to the social media platform that they normally use. Um, so, you know, so long as you have the same one. So for example, if uh, you've got a Twitch channel and you're doing a program, they can click on just that one link tree link and it'll take them to Twitch if they have Twitch and they can be a part of your program. And I think Jonathan, I think Darlene. So you might wanna consider just like pushing that towards your marketing people. Yeah, and Darlene said that they had just launched Linktree. Darlene, do you want to, um, you want to share? Uh, yeah, we are. We're launching it um, through Instagram, and that's mainly because we'll advertise for teen programming on Instagram. Um, and then you can't really put links in Instagram, and so Linktree's um, very useful in that sense. I'll be curious to hear how that works for you all. I'll have to look into that. This is the first I've heard of it. So I'm curious. Jonathan had also put um, a comment in the chat um, that he tried promoting Discord there, but came into some roadblocks with management, which I'm sure none of us know anything about when trying to adopt new tech, right? Um, so any tips or advice about how to get library administration on board? What's their objections? Control. Jonathan, I don't know if you heard the question, but what what is the objection? Uh, Jonathan said they're worried about creepers. We Probably craft kind either. Yeah, we um. We have the teens contact us directly to get access to it. We actually talk to them um, and, and you can make it so that the links expire within 24 hours so that they can't give it out to different people. And I think some people might have mentioned before that um, these things called bots come with Discord and they do everything from playing music to um, censoring language. And there are some bots, they're kind of like um, automated machine uh, that just kind of scan the chat for things. So they will notify you, uh, hey, someone's talking about this or using these keywords in chat and we'll send a message to you as a moderator so you go and look at it. So they are kind of like a 24 hour robotic watchdogs over the Discord channels. Um, there's all kinds of them, but you can, like I said, you can set them to look for keywords and, and certain topics to notify you that, oh, this thing is being discussed in the chat. Come and take a look and, and check on it. 
Yeah, I was going to say the bots, I think I was surprised at the amount of security availability there was for it. Um, it's also technically only recommended, like you technically cannot sign up unless you're 13. Um, and that's for COPA, uh, which is something our admin and our, um, our IT people would be concerned about. So um, you have to be 13 to have an account. If they find out you're 13, you know, Discord may take your account down. Um, so that and bot um, were something that went into when we got it um, okayed. And I don't know if this is helpful, but for some of you who sort of have some of these Discord policies um, written down, if you've been for, if they've been formalized, and if you're willing and able to share those, please feel free to email them to me, or if you have a way to link it into the Google Doc so maybe other people can see um, sort of how your approaches are. Um, I know sometimes that can be helpful um, seeing the policies that other people have in place to be able to then approach their leadership. Um, that would be great. Yeah, Michaela said they've run into objections for security breaches, same reason they aren't able to use Zoom. And B, we find that our silly videos that are informational get a lot of views. We do a video almost every day with story time, crafts, STEM, and lots more. We are known for our silliness. And I know that, um, yes, Darlene, I'll, I'll um, grab that Google Doc link again. Um, and Dee, I don't know if you wanna come in over the, the mic, but I know that y'all were specifically talking about some of your STEAM videos and how you don't necessarily free practice them. And so sometimes um, they, you know, they were talking about how they will do STEAM activities or science experiments, and they maybe don't always work out like they're supposed to, but how that can also be important to kind of model um, that sometimes things just don't go as planned. Yeah, Miss D stepped away for a minute, but um, yes, it it does happen a lot. Where we, I remember last year we did um, we had on a lab coat and stuff, and we were doing um, balloon paint. We we're supposed to fill a balloon with paint and poke a hole in the bottom of it. Well, when we went to poke a hole in the bottom of it, it exploded. We're all covered in green paint, and it got a really good review for us because people are like, "Oh, look, they messed up," but I mean, it. everyone's human, everyone makes error, but it made for a really funny video and we got a lot of likes and views on it because it was just some randomness that we did. And so a lot of times we don't practice before we video because that's what makes it so fun and, you know, scientifically, you know, it's not perfect. Nobody's perfect. We mess up, you mess up, it's okay, you try again. So we have a lot of fun with that. We we do tend to do a lot of silliness, but that's what our patrons like. So we kind of just roll with it. Okay, Linda here. How do you advertise your virtual programming so your patrons know to come at a certain time and tune in? Most of our videos are pre-recorded and then we just give them a specific time, like say um, Thursdays at 10 a.m. we're gonna be doing um, story time, so stay tuned for that video. A lot of ours is posted on Facebook and we go through that and it just makes it easier for them because we kind of like put out a schedule like at 10 a.m. we're gonna have story time or we're gonna be doing this or this. So we kind of give like a set time and then just kind of go from there and then they can also go back and watch it later if they want to because it'll always be on our facebook page we use facebook for the 3,000 subscribers that we have or followers and then with page turner we made like a special summer reading um page and we were doing like some Facebook boosts to try and expand our reach. And then our 
Constant Contact has about 10,000 subscribers, but those are all library card holders. So if anybody has suggestions on how they um, get the word out outside of like their normal patrons, um, that's what we're trying to expand on this summer is like, do we contact child care centers? Do we contact um, summer reading program, you know, summer schools or extended days after school, extended days or summer camps um, to see if they would be interested in watching the virtual content. So if anybody has ideas on outreach, that'd be great. It's actually backwards for me. Um, our outreach department has been doing much better than our story times. I find our patrons are not very um, motivated to go to Facebook. And, you know, we did page turn last year as well. It was free through Cephalin down here. I'm from Boca Raton. And um, I just, like, we had abysmal numbers. So I don't think we're going to go through it. We've had better luck with um, the story times that our staff creates. And I don't know if that's just because it's the recognition. But our um, outreach program, what we've done is um, we do the traditional story time where it's like, you know, three stories, the music, um, and they had previous relationships with local preschools. Also, they'll do is they'll um, tie it around a theme. So winter, you know, we just did a Valentine's one, um, Halloween. And then we make kits to go with it. Very simple, you know, like paper plates. And the, so it's really the young ones. Um, and we've had really good numbers. You know, we have like 130. So we're just kind of expanding the list. Um, we just received our um, mobile library van. So it's not quite a bookmobile, but it's smaller. It's meant for our reach to go out. Um, so now we're using that as like another marketing to at least get out in the community and deliver these um, little kits. Um, the two, the two gals who do it are very um, presentable. You know, they have good uh, stage presence. And so now we're going to try to do, um, put that story time that we've already made into our the city's YouTube page. We're under the city book or tone, so we don't have our own um, YouTube channel. It's tied to that city communication marketing. So we're going to see if that's a little successful. But it's just like, I feel like we're doing a lot of the right things that you guys are doing. Um, but I just, I just don't feel the audience is there. Whenever I talk to parents, a lot of them are like, you know, they don't want to go on. Um, it might be different for summer because, you know, the kids are not in school. But like right now, I'm really struggling to do our live programs um, with the younger ones. The adults are okay. We have, um, I have someone do a virtual storytelling slam. And so it's adults and they do, you know, five to 10 stories. But I have a really good um, facilitator, Dr. Karen Neal. She's like the um, public storyteller for WRNR down here. So she's a well-known um, figure in that world. So that's a good one for adults that I'll continue. But um but yeah, I'm struggling with the little ones. Like, I don't know what else. I think this summer I'm going to do a combination of the story time with the kids because those are popular. Okay, I have and a for question Fry's... from Mandy Morris. How do you use LibGuide pages? Because I'm, you know, I don't want to break copyright rules. We, I'll post um, a link to one in here, but we upload the video to YouTube as unlisted. And then um, we create a lib. We've created several lib guides where the videos live, and then patrons can register to view the videos through um, LibCal, and it'll send them the link to the lib guides. We do kind of post about them on Facebook and tell people how to get to them, but the videos just we don't leave them up on social media. Um, that's kind of how we've been doing it because we've interpreted the lib guide to be a closed platform because it's not they have to register to get to it um it's a bit of hoops for the patrons um but people are using them so but i can show you what we've done we've been just running a closed facebook group um uh, which kind of has been working um uh, we are also partnering up with uh, two groups in town that um, are specifically oriented towards children uh, and families, um, parent to parent and um, bridges. And so we can get their people to come in and look at our stuff, but we haven't been able to get many people outside of them. Although I did have my first bot decide that they wanted to try and join today and I declined them. Um, <laughs> But we make them uh, actually register for the 
the closed group and answer three questions. Do they live in Lake Park? Do they have a library card? So that we can weed out the bots and that kind of stuff. Um, there's two marketing pieces you might want to try as well. Um, a lot of libraries nationwide are doing uh, virtual uh, visits with schools. Um, and also, if you can't do a virtual visit in real time, you can always get with their school media specialist. And uh, if they have a pre-recorded news that they do in the morning, uh, you can send them a snippet type video about summer reading and uh, send it their way and they'll play it. Yeah, and, and piggybacking off of that as well, I don't know what the summer school situation is looking like for schools this summer, but if the schools in your area are hosting summer school, that might be another way to tap into, um, you know, appearing virtually during a summer school session. Uh, um, also, we're, um, we're distributing summer meals again. And uh, while we do that, we use that as a captive audience as well to give out marketing materials. Um, as far as the copyright stuff goes, uh, with our library, we've been doing a combination. We still do the, the two story times, the zero to five, six to 11, um, and then with the craft take home bags. What we've been doing is a combination of non-copyrighted stuff, you know, Beatrix Potter, things like that, and to give us a break while we just straight up contact, we pick the books, pick contact the publishers and tell them, you know, we're going to use it um, as unlisted, accessible through our Facebook. Um, they'll be able to view it for one month and then we'll take it down. We're not making money off of it. And we've had really good with success with the publishers coming back and saying, yes, it's fine to, to use it, um, usually within a couple of days. So. We basically do that, use those, and then have the break with the non-copyrighted stuff to give us time to ask the publishers for the next round of books for permission to use them. I have a question that's virtual programming adjacent. Um, we're at the stage where our COVID numbers fortunately are getting a bit better. And uh, Leon County is operating in phase two, even though the state of Florida is in phase three right now, but we're looking to go into phase three at some point. Um, and I'm wondering um, what everyone is doing when you get to the point where you're partially open to have a limited in-person participation for programs. I'm wondering if you're going to be doing hybrid programming. Um, we're definitely looking at that and we're looking at it at a long, as a long-term offer um, because we've noticed that virtual programming has really boosted teen attendance and adult attendance um, with our programming. But I guess my question is, um, if anybody has started to develop their hybrid programming um, plan, um, if so, what kind of technology are you using? Um, what sort of legal concerns do you have? Say, you know, if we have a story time and you're filming it, um, you know, do you keep the other children out of the screenshot? Like, do you keep them in? Do you have waiver forms that parents sign? Like, I feel like it can get can get pretty complicated in a hybrid environment legally with minors. Well, I'll, I'll speak up. I'm kind of surprised anybody's going to have groups of children and parents face to face. Is anybody else thinking they're going to do like register for small groups and how small a group are you going to do? I don't really get this uh, stepping into doing something face to face with a group. I've seen um, down here because we had a question uh, email to our city manager about in person programs. And so we did a little research about what the other um, municipal libraries and county libraries were doing here in South Florida. And there are a couple. I know um, 
Morton Beach is doing tiny, they're calling them tiny story times. And it's really just for our family. It's like three people, you know, inside a room. Um, Mandel Public Library has, um, I think they're called Sunshine Stories and they do it on Saturdays, but they have a nice patio and they're in like, in a, you know, downtown area. So they do it outside, which is nice. Um, I've pitched it to our administration, but our city manager is very risk averse. So every single thing we've tried to uh, safely conduct has been denied. So um, I'm just waiting until, you know, we have more. So so for us in, in our in our um, space, we're not doing anything. I have seen other because we fall under parks and recreation. I've also seen other parks and recs departments do, you know, like a drive in movie. Um, but again, like our city is very um, conservative. So not for us. We thought we could bring in our tail wagging tutors because that would be a very low one on one. It would be inside with mask. Um, but no. <laughs> Shut down. And we're definitely, I feel like we're a good ways away from having any on-site programming. Um, I'm just trying to get ready because I, I don't know, I foresee us say we can have six people in a room and then all of a sudden we're going to see this massive drop in our programming attendance um, and this just real disruption to how folks have been engaging in our programs. So I want to kind of smoothly transition, but I'm not 100% sure how. And Michelle, you may want to um, reach out to Becca and Heather in Wakulla County because they, and they spoke a little bit um, in our previous sessions, but I, I want to make sure we're sort of focusing on the virtual aspect for, for today's session, but they have started doing some in-person, um, and so they did share a bit. Um, you can either go back and rewatch that video or we're neighbors. I'm sure they don't mind if you pick up the phone and call them, but they talked about how they have signups and they limit. And instead of doing hour long programs, they've shortened it to minutes and they have a big enough space that they can have a certain number of people really spaced out. Um, so they might be a good, a good library system because they're up here. Um, but they are also a little bit different, you know, a, a smaller, smaller rural area with fewer people. Um, that they'd be a good contact as well. Uh, one thing we're doing at a uh, one of our rural libraries is um, it's based on a book called Multicultural or uh, Sidewalk Games from Around the World. So uh, all around the outside of the library, we'll put um, not just the obstacle course in chalk, but uh, multicultural games so that you know each week there'll be a different one outside. And uh, we purchased some uh, sidewalk chalk that lasts, that it's actually water resistant. It's not waterproof, but water resistant. So if you, could, if you do get a downpour, um, it should last. Yeah, this is Linda. Uh, I work with Jonathan and the artistic work he has put into his sidewalk, uh, follow along. I mean, you jump three times, you, you know, twirl around. I mean, it's amazing that he's got it all around the building and on the sidewalk. The other thing outside, um, we tried the, we couldn't afford the story walk, uh, things that you can buy that are beautiful. You know, you just insert your pages of the books that you buy. You buy two books and then you can have a story walk because you use each page. You can understand that you need two books to get around copyright with a story walk. But we found out we couldn't keep them outside. I mean, the pages, the, the way we had them, we couldn't afford the nice, beautiful story walk things you can buy. We had to just laminate them, put them outside the building, and they would last until the next rainstorm. So one of our libraries in Leesburg has done their story walk pages within the library. So that's something that's in your library, but virtual. Um, one other thing that I'm going to be experimenting with this year is uh, creating an image on the ground in chalk that a, a child could be photographed on, like their parents can come out and take a picture and it looks like they're flying or, you know, holding onto a bunch of balloons, you know, stuff like that. And there's tons of ideas for those on Pinterest. I feel a webinar coming on. <laughs> And I know that um, I was, I'm on a CSLP mailing list with all the state reps and the rep from Michigan, they've been holding virtual brainstorming sessions as well. 
um, and they recently shared out a lot of their information of what their staff, and I, I took a peek because I, I'm like, you know, maybe there's something I haven't heard yet, which is very possible. Um, I know a couple of things they talked about doing was um, especially aligning with the summer reading theme um, was doing the pet self portraits. And so they're incorporating that because if you've been on any social media right now, you have probably seen these paintings of pets that look like they were from back in the Renaissance and they're all dressed up and they're sort of becoming a fad right now. Um, but something else they mentioned was like a Zoom reading theater, which I'm trying to get more information on. So like if you have a, a hefty theater uh, population or interest in your community, um, that might be an option is doing online theater through the library. So. Um, Darlene asked if anyone's doing any sort of video streaming had to let go of our movie license since, since they did not offer streaming rights. Um, our virtual programming group in Lake County is going to be jumping into this and uh, we're going to work with the logistics of it. I mean, we have the license and here's hoping that we can, um, we can take advantage of that. Mandy, didn't you say something earlier about one of the things y'all do over your Discord is stream something? Did I just make that up? Yeah, right? we've been, we, we have Crunchyroll and we've been doing the Crunchyroll. I was curious about that. Well, I was curious about um, Darlene's comment because I reached out to Crunchyroll and they said we couldn't virtually stream it. Um, and Canopy also told us we couldn't virtually stream it. So that was, those are the two ones we had kind of access to. So we haven't jumped into the virtual streaming um, thing. And I wasn't sure about Funimation. Yeah. And Nisha, I know you shared that information in the chat. Do you want to share that information audibly as well? That seems like good. Uh, sure. sure. Um, um, so uh, we had contacted, like, um, there's a Japanese game called Ego or just Go. And so we were going to do a Team Go group this summer. And there's an anime called Hikaru no Go. And so the we contacted Funimation and they were fine with letting us stream one to two episodes at a time. Like the kids would watch an episode or two and then they would spend, you know, 30 minutes or an hour playing Go, which can be done outdoors. It's something that I was going to propose to my director, but um, they were OK with us streaming a couple of episodes um, in the library, um, which we don't actually have a, a, you know, like swank and all them. There's no actual thing, but they we just called them and they were like, yeah, sure. They you know, send us a letter saying we can do it, so. Yeah, I really wanted you to do that because if I tried to pronounce that, I would have butchered it. <laughs> well, we have about 18 minutes. Is there something we haven't talked about yet that we need to? Just out of curiosity, um, the people that are running virtual D and D games, are you running the virtual D and D game, or do you have somebody come in and and run the game for you? We have our children's specialist um, super into it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm actually the county archivist, but but I'm a big D and D nerd, so I actually run our games. Um, for we had a kids group, and then we had an older group, and so we're going to be starting off with a teen group first. So I run the, all those games myself. Um, okay. Yeah, we have a very passionate staff member. She's a part timer, um, <laughs> and so she does that. She did a cute little video recommendation of the young uh, wizarding the adventures. I forget the adventures guide, um, and we got a good review on 
on our social media. So it really just takes one passion. And when we were doing in-person programming, I also had done um, a like how to create and, and become a dungeon master program with um, a local comic book store down here. They recommended someone. So that was that was fun. That, that could be another thing where you can do virtually. But for us, it just seems to work really well with the Roll20. Yeah, and I, as a staff member, will be running the uh, the games at first. I think ideally a goal of ours would be to facilitate a transition into maybe like teens running for teens and, you know, making it more of a patron to patron program and offering the space and the support because the books are expensive. Um, but for launch and for the initial runs, I'll be running it. We had a lot of interest with our staff um, from like circulation staff to people that, you know, maybe not are in like librarian positions that were really interested in and up. So we've kind of utilized a lot of our staff. I think we have at least four or five that are really into it um, that we've been able to do um, incorporate. And then um, I have a team who really wants to do it to earn volunteer hours. So we're working on that process of getting it more team led. And then, um, uh, we also had groups once they saw us, like um, um, like gaming groups or something, that reached out to us, and that might be something when we get back in person, we're able to incorporate a little bit more. Um, we did. Um, we're working on our third annual. We call ours a Cosmicon. Um, someone was asking in the chat, and so last year it was virtual. Uh, we had a local um, cartoonist come in and show how to make a graphic novel. We did bingo trivia virtually through Zoom. Um, we had activity bags. Um, we did some crafts, like we made um, a comic book wallet. Um, we did a lot of stuff that was cool and we're just starting to plan our one for August this year, which will also be virtual. Um, I was gonna say, I know I had touched on the one page dungeons earlier. Um, she's not kidding when she says these books are expensive. They're like 50 bucks a piece and you need at least three of them to start the game and somebody knows how to do it. It's very intimidating and very pricey. Um, the one page dungeons, literally you print out one piece of paper and you need some dice. Um, you can do it as simple as, you know, roll a D20 and if it's above 10, you do it. And if it's below 10, you fail. It's very simple and very beginner friendly for people. If you don't already have staff, who know how to do D and D because it can be very intimidating to get starting in uh, one page dungeons. Anyone can do it. And they are, it's, I think I posted it in the chat part that the, uh, the dungeon contest is actually a program that's good for teens where they create their own adventure and they have to do it all on one eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. I'm not a huge D and D player. I play with W O D. <laughs> Okay. And Darlene asked a couple questions in the chat, um, which Sally, I think you kind of touched on one. She asked if anyone was doing virtual Comic Con um, or virtual book clubs. Okay, this is Linda again. Um, I'm toying with the kind of virtual book club that would almost be like a book talk but I'd want it to be a book that everybody could actually read at the same time, which in our system would mean tumble books. Um, I don't know how you feel about tumble books, but you know, there, there's Kate D. Camillo's in there, but I can't think of any other way that I could do a book club that people would actually read the books all together. Overdrive. They have a book club where they have certain books that they do as a book club and they allow unlimited checkouts number of people check out those oh, books. Is that the one that only gets announced every once in a while? Yeah, unfortunately. At our, Go ahead. Oh, at our library, we have for physical checkout, book club in a bag uh, setups. I wonder if you all could integrate something like that at Lake County. Um, just buy multiple copies of a book, but rather than send it out to one individual for their own book club, just have them marked as like book club books um, and have a patron register like ahead of time and just effectively put one of the virtual book club books on hold and then they can pick it up and have it for the duration of the virtual book club. Yeah, 
we also have um, our our library has BiblioBoard, which is for indie authors and independent local authors and things. And they also allow unlimited. They don't even check out stuff. It's just you access the book. So as many people who want to use it at the same time can. So we just launched a thousand black girl books book club with one of our local nonprofits and we just had our first session but we were able that we had a little bit of money through a grant that we were able to buy the books for the girls um but we're you know we're also dropping off like a, a make and take um kit. and then we tried to invite we, we we've invited one local um female who is going to speak to the girls about empowerment, but I was just wondering if anybody else had ideas on what other kind of activity you could do through the virtual book club. What are you up to, Linda? I understand that. Chris, your uh, mic is unmuted. And I'm keeping an eye on the chat to see if anyone says anything in response to your question, Darlene. Um, Jonathan did ask if you're using Discord, if you're willing to share your email address. Um, you can do that one of two ways. You can either share it in the chat with everybody or there's a you can select if you just want to send it to him privately if you feel comfortable with that. Um, I will go through the chat and I'll remove contact information before I send that out to everybody. Well, nobody's brought up, but uh, Casey, how are we going to count our stats that we report to you at the end of the summer? <laughs> Uh, we will have a webinar that specifically goes over the stats. It will probably be exactly as they were last year with one additional optional question um, because we're kind of in the same position we were last year. And if I can avoid changing something on all of you, I'm going to do that because I feel like we probably have all had our fair share of change this year. <laughs> Um, but we'll we'll have a um, probably in April um, we'll get a, a stats webinar planned. <laughs> and my boss Dolly, who was the interim state data coordinator, said she loved the stats question. But yeah, we'll we're gonna we're gonna keep it the same except. Like I said, I will probably add one question just because I have a lot of people who want to provide certain information that we don't necessarily ask for. And so I'm going to provide an option for y'all to give it to me, but it's not, you know, won't be required. Um, so if you have any feedback from last year, if you were responsible for collecting that and you want to send me an email, if there was something you really liked, if there was something you really didn't like, um, let me know. And if this is your first year doing it, and you haven't done it in years past, we'll watch it. <laughs> okay, I'm going to speak up one last time. One last time. I just want to say, you know, we're here in Florida. It's so hot. It's not very logical for us to have outside programs. But I will say that at the end, last summer, one of our libraries, one of our city libraries, had an outside event, I think maybe three. And, you know, I don't even think they advertised that widely and they wound up with over 70 people showing up at the outside event. So I'm really nervous about us doing outside stuff or even inside without registration. I mean, and then how do you do you hire a security guard to make sure only the people who registered come? It, it just it makes me very nervous doing face to face programming in a group because nobody can make that little kid sit still. He's going to run around. He's going to hug the other kids. You know. And um, Dr. Fauci says we could all still be wearing masks up to 2022. Just want to put that out there. Yeah, and I think that's where knowing your community comes into play, because what might work for Wakulla County may not work for Lake County, which may not work for Miami-Dade. 
Um, and so I, I think this is one of those circumstances where the community is different and is going to have a different comfort level and different resources to do what they want to do. Um, I know that some people have been planning out for programs, but they're more asynchronous. So things like your scavenger hunt. Um, I saw a title where it was a uh, books and boots, and it was like an adult hiking book club type thing where they, they weren't doing it all at the same time, but it was like they had some kind of a nature related book and it was sort of accompanied with information on local hikes. Um, and so it was kind of, um, you know, pulling together local local treasures, um, which I know we've talked about in the last couple sessions we've had about, you know, local uh, wildlife rehabilitation organizations, if you have any of those, about maybe pulling them into this virtual programming. We have a great one up here in Leon County, St. Francis Wildlife. Um, they do great work. Um, they went a little viral a few weeks ago because they had to rescue a, a beaver and they took a video of him giving the beaver a bath, which is the cutest thing ever um, because he was trying to help. Um, <laughs> and so, uh, you know, and it kind of goes along with the theme as well. Um, Misha said geocaching, that's really popular in our area too. I don't know if it is in your community. Um, and Kara said that um, she's working on a community book hunt. Kara, do you have a mic? You have a mic, right? You want to share some information? Because I know too, people are just getting lethargic when it comes to sitting in a virtual setting. And so the trend that I'm seeing out through our last few sessions is really sort of these hybrid models where they are they can swing by the library, pick something up, but then there's like a virtual element to it as well. I saw it from a library up in Connecticut and I thought it was really, really cute. Um, they had like, they connected with their different businesses around town. And instead of doing like the story walk where you have to do it all in a row and read it all, they just put like book title covers, book covers in the windows of the different businesses and then gave the um the library people coming in the patrons like a list of the different businesses and then they had to go find what book title was at each different business and write it down and bring it back to the library so i thought that was a cute way to work in your your downtown businesses and stuff like that and the library probably are also struggling through all of this so partnership. Um, there, there are some workarounds uh, as well that you could do where if there's a city event um, you can get permission to set up either a booth or have the friends of the library set up a booth something like that so at least you can count the people there that you're either marketing to or you're sharing the story with I don't know uh, or set up, setting up a puppet stage at a outdoor event things like that, because then any onus really is, is put on a different entity, which county administration likes. And Lisa shared in the chat that they're doing five week craft bag for the adults, um, where they pick up the stuff from the library and then they have videos um, afterwards. So again, it's something they can physically do, but there's a virtual element as well. So we have three minutes left. Um, I'm really, really glad you all could join us today. I always learn so much from the brainstorming session. Um, and it's always helpful for me to know how I can best support you all, because obviously my role is a little bit different. I'm, I'm not on the front lines like you all are. I'm, I'm here to be your support. Um, so if you run into any challenges or just need help can maybe connecting with somebody else in another part of the state if you dealt with a similar challenge, um, please know that I'm here. Please, please reach out. Um, I know Linda and I chat frequently and I always enjoy our talk. Sorry. <laughs> and Jonathan's getting a phone call. Um, but I, I do just want to say that you all have done remarkably amazing work this last year. And it's going to be a great summer. Um, 
we had a little bit more prep this year that we have to approach things differently than last year. Um, and I know last year there was a lot of disappointment because you all had already planned out an entire summer worth of activities that just for the most part had to get thrown out. And that can be very disappointing and very exhausting. Um, but you all did it. it part of the story and I was blown away, away by last year's statistics. And, and you know, again, that's just part of the story. That's not the, the actual stories of how you're reaching your community. So uh, it's some, something just uh, occurred to me. There's a very creative way for uh, kids to do community service hours at the moment. And believe it or not, it's TikTok challenges or TikTok videos that they can do, um, which help the library. Something that they're willing to share, something like that. So if you want to look into it, uh, just Google TikTok challenge and community service hours, and you'll find some examples of that. You. I know that was a big conversation we had during our team session as well, is trying to help you teams get your hours. Mm -hmm. um, I will send a follow-up email. It'll have the recording of this. It'll have the link to the Google Doc and a link to the quick survey. Um, I'm here. It's going to be great. Um, be kind to yourself and give yourself grace. We are still living in a crisis a year later. It is okay to realize that there are just going to be certain things you can't do focus on the things you can do. i'm bringing out my social worker hat now we're, we're all going to sing kumbaya are you ready <laughs> hold, hold virtual hand um so i'm going to let everyone go thank you all so much enjoy your week <laughs> and we'll see you soon Bye, guys.